What's going on, folks? This is Big Daddy for Big Daddy Forever coming at you with a quick, doing a little quick podcast here. Uh, I took some questions that I posted on my Instagram recently. Of course, these questions and this podcast is sponsored by crazyhoodies.com, my shop, and that is spelled with a Z, not an S. So go check it out. Got, got some cool ass merch on there. I got some cool hoodies on. Cool hoodies. Hoodies. <laughs> I got my Alchemist line on there. I got some in the form of t shirts, tank tops, and some other good stuff. So it's not all just hoodies as some people have recommended to me. No, got to get my name out there. Got to get the business rolling. So you'll go check it out. Crazyhoodies.com. And. Yeah, let's get this rolling, folks. I am. I'm, I'm excited for this podcast today because there's just a lot of shit going on in Big Daddy's life that it's just, you know, good stuff. Good stuff. So let's, let's, let's roll with some of these questions, all right? First one, Big Daddy, what did you mean in your last post? What did you mean it's time for healers to step up? That's exactly what I mean. This world, I really feel right now, the energy is just really nasty, it's chaotic, especially here in the United States. You know, I, I do. I make fun of it now more than ever. First world problems. We as Americans, we're some spoiled motherfuckers and we know it. We don't have to worry about the majority of shit that goes on in the world because I remember that. I remember reading an article a long time ago. For every American, we have 57 slaves. That means there's always someone in some third world country making your bullshit so you can survive. So all those people who say, well, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm self-made. Uh, no, actually, you have help from a lot of third world countries overseas. I don't give a damn who you think you are, what you say that you are, what you create, what you make, whatever. We all have 57 slaves. And it's kind of crazy. So for when I say it's time for the healers to step up, these so-called entrepreneurs, I they, they're coming into my job. I know in particular my job, they're coming in with their baggage, their issues. They're coming in with their mean mug faces. They're trying to keep it together. And, hey, that's nothing, that's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, I always hear that that thing about make it, you know, fake it. There you go. Fake it until you make it. Um, you can act hard all you want to. That destroys you from the inside. I know this because I did that shit for a long time. I acted hard when I thought I was a little thug and shit like that. And, you know, we all have to have a certain measure of protecting our peace. I get it. You know, we don't want no one to fuck us over. We don't want anyone to think they can get over on us. So we put up this shell. We put up this front. And it's got to come down sooner or later. For In my instance, when people come into my damn job and... I would say my damn job. I just it's just habit, folks. I I, don't, I like my job. I, I don't not dislike it. <laughs> but every time someone comes into my job and they want me to put hands on them, you know, I just need a massage. You know, just right here on my shoulders and my neck and my back, right here and right here. And they show me, or some people would like to get, you know, try to get technical, try to sound smart. Yeah, around my quadratus lumborum, you know, up through the spinae and all this and all this. So in other words, right here, and I touch like their mid back, I touch their lower back and I touch by their hips. This area right here, in other words, yeah, that, that's, that's what I thought I just said. No, I said, no offense. You're trying to be smart. <laughs> I'm surprised doc ain't fired my ass yet because sometimes I, I get smart ass within customers and oh God, they deserve it sometimes. But anyway, we're, we're going to be needed. I've seen it more and more. People in their feelings and the way that the world just coming down on them. They're going to need work. They're going to need that healing touch. They're going to need that open ear from uh, from from uh, another different kind of therapist. No, when I say therapist, I mean, you know, massage therapist, uh, a counselor or a clinical psychiatrist, therapist, no, a stretchologist, a healer. No, some people say, I hate that term, healer. Well, you can hate it. I like it. Matter of fact, if you hate it, I'll love it. Uh, yeah, that's. I'm serious. We're going to be needed. The more the more I see people come in with sad faces, long faces, to come into my job. And it's funny, every time they get on my table, they, t they still try to act tough. Maybe about 15 minutes in, I don't realize that. Sometimes they're crying. I'm sorry, I, just, I can't help it. Oh, no, this is your time, place, and space. You do what you want, okay? You cry, you release this shit however you want, but just, no, relax, let it go. 
just let it go. This this is why you're here. You're here. You're here to take care of you. you no, know, fuck your family. Fuck your friends. Even fuck you for a minute. Just relax. Forget about your problems. Let me let me do my let me do my work. And some of them are very grateful that I do that. And it, it cracks me up because some of them just really, really just they just need it so bad. If you're another therapist out there, you know, what what's what's something that you feel on your clients that they hold it that where they hold it in the most? Mine happened to be lately the scalp. And when you when you when you massage a scalp and the scalp is just that damn hard and rigid, oh man, that that can cause a lot of headaches, neck pain, you know, frontal lobe pl- pl- uh, pain, blah, pain, pain. <laughs> your vision starts getting blurred, your your jaw gets tight. You know, it, it causes a lot of issues around your cranial area. So yeah, I I do a lot of scalp massages. I have been well. I I always do scalp massages. But that becomes my most number one request. It, it's it's I I feel bad for the people, even though some of my clients, I'm not gonna lie, I shouldn't say this, but some of my clients do get on my nerves. But but for the most part, I love them all. They they come in, you know, you you got to give them love because this is what it's about doing massage. It's just you you just I don't know. It's just a magical thing that you have the power and the ability to give someone some magic touches that's going to make them feel better to my massage therapist and my other stretch therapist or my other just therapist in general i hope you're getting yourselves taken care of too i hope you're getting your massages in i hope you're getting your stretching in i hope you know to all my i don't know just all my just my healers in general whatever your profession is i hope you're getting the same kind of love that you're that you're doing as well i'm i'm bad about getting massages too <laughs> but lately i've been on a roll i've actually been doing good by ask, asking people if they want to do trades or i'm like I'll, I'll go pay one of my fellow clinic my fellow massage therapists all right my words are all just jumbled up this afternoon <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's probably because this weather just has me all mellow it's been it's been kind of raining all day so i just looked out the window right now it's it's been raining off and on all day it's a cloudy and for the first time in a while, I actually got some moisture. My nose is runny, as you can tell. It's not it's not from the dryness or from the pollens because we actually have some damn humidity, and it just oh, it feels good. So Big Daddy's been outside all day, just taking in that old nice fresh moisture. And my neighbor's kids, they're looking at me. Why are you breathing like that? Well, is your little snotty nose out to do the same damn thing there, pal? Because look at you, you got muckles galore. Shit. <laughs> Oh, dude, I, I love my neighbors though. They're they're cool. I, I need to give them massages too because I hear them sometimes the way they be screaming at each other, and I know they just be going buck wild on each other. I'm like, you motherfuckers are getting on my nerves right now. Come here, just get on my damn table and take care of you. <laughs> Let's jump on to the next question, folks. Before I get started on it, Big Daddy, why don't you post massage and and or stretching videos? Because when I ask people if I can do that. They say no. Oh, I'd rather not do. I'd rather not be posted like that. I'd rather, or they got body issues. Oh, I don't want my fat to show. I don't want this to show and stuff like that. You know, I I I get it. I get it. I understand. I it's an open invitation. I'm just throwing it out there right now. If there's anyone in Flagstaff who would want who wants a free comp massage while I record it, just so I can have something to display on my social media. Let me know, please. Let me know uh, when I post this. When I post this, this podcast, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll definitely get in touch with you. Or you get in touch with me either on my Instagram or the email that's going to be down below. Please, you know I, I, that's. I would love to have some some demo stuff done, but I, I get it. You know, a lot of people don't want the privacy. They want their they don't want their their body showing like that. They have, like I said, they have body issues, body image issues. And me personally, I don't give a shit. Hell, my I'm somewhere on the damn internet with half my damn body showing <laughs> from uh, from massage videos and stuff like that, helping other people out. Hell yeah, I don't care. Uh, what, what are the people going to say? Oh my god, he, he's chunky. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little chunky. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not as chunky as I used to be, but. Big Daddy still got a little little fluff on him. I'm trying to get rid of that. I ain't trying to have no six pack because I don't know. Is that that's a lot of work? And right now, I don't have time for that. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get my massage on and 
learn my extra lessons, my CEUs and stuff like that. Yeah, and I, st- I still work out, do what I can, but yeah, I, I need to take it up a step. Maybe someday I'll get a six pack, and if I do, I'm gonna show it off. I'm boy, I'm gonna show it off. I'm like ha, you motherfuckers who called me chubby. Now look, your mama chubby, and she probably is. But anyway. <laughs> I'll get a six pack someday. I am going to show it all off. But like I said, for anyone who wants to do a trade here in Flagstaff, who wants me, who can let me record so I can, you know, show off what I do on social media, please let me know. What have we got here? Big Daddy, what did you mean? Oh, nope. I'm sorry. I was going to ask other question. Big Daddy, uh, at your age, what have you realized that's the most important now? I realize that it's not. My age, I'm not bothered by it anymore, even though there's still a lot of people who are bothered by their age. I laugh at some of my friends online who sit there and they dye their hair and shit like that. Oh, I don't want my gray to show. I still want no look young. Okay, that's fine. Someday you're going to have to let it show. You know, just let just just be you for all. And it's always the people who I'm sorry. Yes, my, my lady friends, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. It always seems to be y'all. Who talk that shit about, well, I don't give a damn what nobody says, but yet you constantly dye your hair not to show your gray. And then you come up with excuses. Yes, to me, they sound like excuses. Well, you know how people talk shit about women about their age and shit like that. But you didn't give a damn. Right? Right? But now you do. I, I don't I don't get y'all sometimes, y'all. And women got the nerve to talk about men being confusing. Shit, women, you got us beat. Hell, we like showing off our damn girl. Well, actually, nah, that's a damn lie because I know there's a few fellas out there who get that dye shit and put it in their beards or their hair and stuff like that, and they get to sweating. They're sweating like that one prosecutor who's being Trump's <laughs> Trump's camp, and he's sweating on the damn, he's sweating on TV and just the streaks of a <laughs> of a dye going down their faces. <laughs> shit cracks me up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I find humor in the, in the, in the stupidest shit. But that was, that is stupid, though. Just just show it off. Show your gray. I show my gray off. No, I don't give a damn. People say, oh, you my God, Phil, you're, you're showing. Yes, I am. Thank you. I earned this. I earned these gray hairs. I earned where I'm at this stage of my life right now because I didn't think I was going to be here. I'm not lying. I it's, it's the quality of life I'm more interested now in having. I don't want to... I'm not gonna lie. I I, I told myself I'm not gonna die in the old folks' home. I'm gonna die out there in the open air. I'm gonna be active all the way up until until I can't no more. I, I'm I'm serious. I'm I'm not gonna go to my grave all pretty and shit like that. Like everyone wants to do nowadays. Everyone wants to be you know. Oh, I, I want to be in a nice preserved body. Shit, you know what? You can still be in a nice preserved body, but you still got to work out. Hell, movement is medicine. That's I've been hearing that term for the last oh fifteen years from uh from the bartenders over there in, in New York City who who do the damn thing with body calisthenics. Movement is medicine, and it's something that the mainstream is now stolen, but it's true. I'm going I'm I'm going to slide into my grave, beat up, worn out. I'm gonna just look at myself and like shit. That was a ride. Hell yeah. Oh, that was a ride. Let, let, next life, let's see what happens. Yes, I do believe in next lives, and I do believe in past lives. I believe in all that because we're energy. Energy doesn't get destroyed, okay? Energy just moves on. It changes form, changes shape. And we get called upon into these bodies when there's a lesson that needs to be learned, which at this age, I am learning a huge, huge lesson. I'm learning not to be second choice anymore. And... Lately, I actually say at the last almost 20, 25 years, I've allowed myself to be second choice. And that's something that I told myself I realized that's what I do. And I'm not going to do that no more. I've over the last couple of years, I've made some progression of being a better person. I want to, I've had this vision of myself since I was a kid of the type of person I want to be. I want to be and I wanted to be. And I. Now, after all these years, I'm working towards it. I know a lot of folks are afraid to start working on themselves. You know, they, they say, well, it's late in the game. It's too late. No, it's, it's never too late. You're alive. You're kicking it. 
if you refuse to make betterments to your life, then maybe it is too late for you. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe this type of life was not built for you in the first damn place. That's, that's just my opinion. I see a lot of folks who would rather just drink and party. And I know a lot of, you know, a lot of my homeboys, they, they, they go to work, they go home, they just want a beer and just crash on the couch. And, you know, their family wants them to do stuff like that. But hell, you know, the, the only thing that they know is hard work. They were never, you know, never, never told, hey, you got to have playtime too. No, my generation was just told that, you know, you got to work hard and you can play later on when you retire. That was that. That's something that was beaten to my damn head. And that's something I'm still trying to get out of my head. And it, it's rough. It really is. But, you know, the older generation, our parents don't see anything wrong with that. They think that, oh, well, you know, you have to have some kind of values. But nowadays, it seems like our older generation don't have any values anymore either. Hell, they want to be on social media and get on their feelings about the shit. And <laughs> it just fucking cracks me up, man. But I have to say, most of all, at this stage in my age, just wanting to live this life purposefully, lovingly. And making sure I exit leaving at least one person in a better spot than they were yesterday. And I realized that that person is me. Sure, I can help someone else. Sure, I can help someone realize their potential. But I got to realize my potential first. People always say that this life is built for servitude. How can you serve someone if you're not in a good mental spot or physical spot yourself? So... Work on yourself, folks. It's never too late. It really isn't. It it just it just takes it just takes some discipline and for you to reach a point and and you shouldn't have to reach a point where you say, you know what, I can't do this no more. I, but everyone has their everyone has their breaking points. I had my breaking point a few times, and I I really feel like I've reached my last breaking point. I'm I don't want to be second choice anymore. I want to find love. I want to be loved. I want to be with someone who's going to love me the way I love them, but I don't want to be second choice no more. You feel me? No one likes to be second choice. I don't want to be my, my, my problem is I've always been the one that's not healed up. Right. And I realize in the last couple of weeks, I haven't been healed up. You know, my, my first wife, you know, that was a bad marriage. I'm not gonna lie. She cheated on me and, I never healed from that. I kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Oh, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I ended up, <laughs> I still remember calling her up and texting her saying, hey, you know what? I forgive you when I really didn't. I just wanted to try to find a way to move on. And after all these years, after some recent events, I realized I didn't heal from that shit. So now it feels like I had to take almost 20 steps back in order to take one step forward. And you know what? I'm going to do it because I realized something. I'm worth a damn. Someone out there is going to find me to be worth a damn. And that's what I want. So, and I'm not trying to, you know, bag on anybody or anything or because a lot of people get in their films. Well, you, who you talking, you talking about me, huh? No, I'm not talking about you. This is my journey has nothing to do with nobody. Your journey has nothing to do with nobody, folks. This is all on you, okay? All on you. I believe in you. You can do it. Do the damn thing. Fucking heal, move forward, and live this life as best as you fucking can because in this time, in this place, in this space, you are here to learn a lesson that your next life need not repeat. So do your next life a favor. Fucking make this one rock. That's that's why I remember it now. That's why we remember this life now in this moment because we got some damn healing to do. I know I got healing to do. Let's do it together. I got you back. Where's the last one? Oh, there we go. Scroll too far. Ha! <laughs> All right. Big Daddy. This is the last one, by the way. Big Daddy, in Poems and Prose, your first book, you said, too black for the Mexicans, too Mexican for the blacks. What did you mean? I could ask this a lot, and I can't remember someone asked me this before in one of my earlier podcasts, like like a couple years ago. But if they did, I'll answer it again. So uh, what I meant by, it was a quick poem, too black for the Mexicans, too Mexican for the blacks, just right for me. That's exactly what I meant. Uh, growing up in a predominantly Mexican household, you know, growing up interracial, 
my family, the Mexican side of my family, you know, the ones who live in my grandma's house, I like to use the word nigger a lot. Little nigglet, little this, little nigger this, little nigger that, neglito and stuff like that, little malato and shit like that. They said it so damn much, I thought that that was my damn name after a while. <laughs> it, it was fucked up. I never was around the black side of my family because that was a whole different mess between him and between my dad and my mom. And I found out years later on down the road that, you know, there was just a bunch of shit between, between all that. I don't want to get into it, but my black friends later on down the road always tried to make me choose. Well, you got to drop a black blood and you, you're, you're black. Well, what about the Mexican side? No, no, that don't matter. That don't matter. My stepdad used to tell me that shit until finally one day I told him, if you say that one more goddamn time, I'm going to show you what the Mexican side can do, bitch. <laughs> okay. you, you, you reach a breaking point. If you're in a, trust me, folks, if, if you have interracial, you know, relatives and you think that you guys are being smart by talking all that bullshit, it hurts. I'm telling you right now, it fucking hurts. We don't like it. And then when we show you when we don't like it, then you have the nerve to call foul. Okay. And, and we trust me, we have no problem showing the so-called biggest and baddest of you in these families how bad you're not. Because we 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 deserve the same love and respect as you give everyone else. You know, we, we I've heard different things. Oh, you're 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 pretty handsome, even though you're even though you're dark, Mijito. You're even though you're dark, you're still handsome. Fuck you. You're not you're not even cute. You prunish looking ass bitch fuck you <laughs> shit and then the and then the blacks my black friends shit they know nah, you, you, you just don't know what side of the fence you want huh so after hearing that shit for so long i finally realized that that's no no matter what i do just accept myself just as, accept myself and that was hard to do at first because you no know, it was still coming at me all going all the way up until i had mad at the same maybe until i was about 30 when I finally just said, you know what? If you don't like the way I am, don't fucking come around me. That that's that's all I got to say. If you don't like it, don't come around me. The funny thing is though, as I got older, nigger this, nigger that, for my Mexican family, stopped. I said, like, oh, now that I can do really do something about it, y'all got the hush mouth, huh? You pussy ass motherfuckers. They made, oh, and my my brother, he's he had the worst. Okay, he he looks he looks white. He got he got he he gets that from his from his dad's side. His uh well, our grandma, she's my grandma too, shit. My grandma Inez, she was she was Cajun. Uh pale skin, fire red hair. I mean, fire red. And it was so damn cool even as she aged when she when she was like in her 60s and 70s, uh-uh, still fire red. Ooh. And she, every time we go see her, she just look at Steve, look at me, give him some sugar, baby. I'm like, oh, yeah, sugar, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was cool. She, she, she was, she was good people. She, she was the one who also taught me and Steve, babies, don't listen to all that nonsense. Y'all are beautiful just the way you are. If they don't love you, I love you more. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and that still goes through my head to this day. If they don't love you, I love you more. And which translated later on to me was, if you don't like it, I fucking love it. I'm not here for you. And I don't care to be here for you or anyone else. And the other part of that, the two, you no, know, two Mexican for the blacks. Sometimes I would hear this this the most ridiculous thing. Oh, you light skin. You you don't you don't you don't know what we what we go through. I was I I I I started getting getting hate for being light skin. Like goddamn, can't fucking win for losing. Shit, fuck you guys. So that's where that poem came from. Too black for the Mexicans. Too Mexican for the blacks. Just right for me, and I will always be right for me. To all my other interracial people out there who listen to this, you are just right for you. Fuck anyone else who tells you, oh, you're 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 not good enough because you're half of this, you're half of that, or you got to pick a side because you got to drop a black blood. Man, fuck them. You are perfect, beautiful, just the way you are. And if they don't like it, that's on them. Remember, it's on them. Yes, go read the Four Agreements. I, I tell all my interracial people that who always ask me, how did you handle this shit growing up? 
I did the best I could. And then I read also later on in life, the four agreements that was the ultimate, you no know, nail in the coffin for me for that whole, for that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's beautiful. I, I highly recommend, recommend it folks. No, I didn't have too much coffee today. No, no. And here I'm supposed to be quitting drinking all that goddamn coffee, and I haven't. It just tastes so good. I don't care what people say. It does taste so damn good. <laughs> anyway, folks, that's it. That's it for me. I got to get off this and get ready for some other, some other kind of podcast. I'm, I'm in, in the, in the, in the midst of working on. So to stay tuned for that one in the coming weeks. You'll you'll hear a major announcement, and you're also going to hear a major announcement later on in the following weeks about a giveaway I'm going to be doing. And then, of course, on the C plus side, where KMB is still doing the damn thing for C plus Studios and his various podcasts, New World Podcast, that Juggalo, that Juggalo Podcast. Go check them out. C plus Studios on all major podcast stations, and including. YouTube, which you can find me on YouTube and, of course, on the C Plus Studios uh, Instagram and YouTube website. Just just check it out. All kinds of goodness. So we're going to be doing a couple of giveaways. Well, just stay tuned. Just stay tuned, especially especially for my gamers out there. Stay tuned. We, we're doing a we're doing a game giveaway. And some people who do know what the game is. Well, can we enter? No, because you're part of C Plus Studios. You can't enter. <laughs> and they're like, well, can we enter your contest? You most certainly can. So just listen to the details for that one, folks. It's going to be good. I can't wait. And it's, it's it's my thank you. It's my personal thank you for listening and showing your support. I You don't know how much it means to me. Yes, I know some of y'all have tried to talk shit to me well you only got 10 subscribers hey you know what that's 10 more than i had yesterday <laughs> so fuck off anyway i love you have a good evening have a good rest of your week remember keep your heads up move forward don't let the bullshit get to you and just love yourselves all right as always mwah! peace